So, you can start off with your name. Casey Seaman. And how long have you been in the horse industry for? I've uh, been in about 45 years. I actually I started off at, at, at the farm when I was a, a kid, the, the Olympic Farms. I worked there until 19... 75 and 75 I took over the Windy Knoll farm which was the new and upcoming farm in Ohio it was the seventh second most productive farm ever in the state of Ohio for resources we had two Kentucky Derby winners in our first four racers I mean in our first four crops and from there <coughs> the owner of Airdrie Stud had come twice invited me down. I went down and spent time with him. He offered me a, the job as, as their broodmare manager. Well, it, <clears throat> after I'd worked at Airdrie for about eight or nine years, uh, it's a little burnout. We started at four o'clock every day, worked usually till eight or nine o'clock every night, seven days a week. And was you know getting a lot of accomplishments for the owner and I just kind of wanted to go on my own and start my own business and, and do my own farm so I, I quit on the interim <clears throat> he um, had an opportunity to build a racetrack in Oklahoma City and uh, I kind of you know, studied building and, and, and worked for a building, for a company that built for a short term, just in order to learn how to build. And then we had, they had a little financial issue with that. Uh, and that's when I moved to Le Ocala, Florida from Lexington. I had some friends down here that were with pin hooking horses and they kept encouraging me to move down. So in 1991, I moved to Ocala. Well, you have to be a jack of all trades. You have to be able to do everything in the industry. You have to be a complete horseman. <clears throat> you have to be kind of your own veterinarian. You have to learn how to do everything. Uh, a lot of people depend on, for instance, a veterinarian, but a lot, you know, a lot of times while they're waiting on a veterinarian, their horses pants or, or, or so badly damaged they can't be saved. So I've learned a lot about the veterinarian being a veterinarian and, and how to treat horses, how to diagnose, uh, I've kind of excelled in that part of it. Um, everything else I had pretty much done. I'd done from breeding to foaling to breaking and, and training the race horses. And um, I'm just uh, pretty much covered, you know, the, the, the whole gamut as far as what, what there is to do in the business. and. I can do enough to keep myself out of trouble in everything. Um, I need some help in, in, in certain, I, I can't shoe overs. I can trim one, I can't shoe one, but from uh, the standpoint as far as keeping them safe and, and from injury or, or repairing an injury, I can pretty much handle all that. Well, well, the horse racing industry is very risky. Um, it, you, you get thrills from racing horses that you get in no other industry. People, that's why people keep coming back. That's why the owners are there. They call it's called the sport of kings, and because especially now it takes a king's ransom just to, to buy your animals to keep them going. It costs as much as. $10,000 a month to keep some horses in training. Um, but it's, it's, it's the thrill. It's the thrill that people, especially when people have, like we do, breed horses and raise them and, and you get to see something that you you delivered out of a mare to come and to make its first start and win races. And then as they step up the uh, ladder and, and go to the higher races and that, that type of thing, it's just, it's exciting and 
I'll tell you, it's no more exciting to win a $5,000 race than it is a $500,000 race. It's exciting. Everybody gets thrilled. And, um, you know, it, 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 it's a sport and it's very addictive sport. Well, it's one of the riskiest sports you can, you can invest in because thoroughbreds are one of the most fragile, are the most fragile horse and one of the most fragile animals there are. Uh, they, it takes very little to, to injure one severely or to kill one. Uh, just a, a, a tiny little bit of electric can kill a horse. Um, they have colic which is, is uh, kind of like a child, it's when they're, they get a bellyache and difference being the horses can't, can't fend for, do anything about it. They, and there's, you can't um, give them a, a, just a drug to, to sedate them like a, or to make their belly feel better. You know, if it's a severe colic, they twist guts, they take operations and once they, they get hurt, just you have, every time a horse runs, you put 22, 22 tons of pressure on each foot that hits the ground. And you're talking about legs that are, are just a quarter as big as a human's legs. What clientele now is pretty much, there is none. Everybody's lost their clients, that's why everybody went out of business. Um, as the, the clients started getting the squeeze on their finances and their middle class people, uh, the the wealthy end of it, you know, those people pretty much, they're more interested in the, the pictures and the fame than they are the horses for the majority of them. And so they go with the most high profile stables, high profile trainers. And those trainers and stables are high profile for a reason. People do do it for the enjoyment and the, and the, the middle class people, they're, they are all gone. They're, there's none to, to find and hopefully and occasionally a new one or here will jump into the business and or they're you know they transfer from people who aren't doing a good job for them and that's pretty much all you can do it's not like you can you can go out and find them we used to they were everywhere and it was easy to pick up clients and it's no longer that way